temple from God our Father, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Come on, everyone in the house ought to stand up on your feet, clap your hands. And if you own this live, come on, you ought to praise God with us. Put your hands together, somebody. Put some power in your hand, clap. Come on, if he's been good to you, you're not praising me. We're not praising men, but we're praising the Almighty King. We praising the mighty Savior. Come on. Come on, we praising the everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace, the great I am. Come on, put your hands together. Oh, come on, come on. Anybody know him to be the great I am? Anybody know him to be the great I am? He's everything that you need. Come on. If you need him right now, God can step in. God can change it. God can fix it. God can turn it. Come on. Somebody open your mouth and give God some praise. Come on, honey. Come on. You in the house of God. We not in no library. Come on. This is the house of prayer. Come on. This is the sanctuary. And this is where we come to praise him. Come on. Lift your voice. Let everything that has breath. Tell it everything. Come on, you wanna open your mouth and bless him? Come on. This ain't no play thing. When I woke up this morning, my mind was on him. When I woke up this morning, I gave him thanks. Come on, somebody. He's been good. He's been good. Come on. He's been good. You don't lost loved ones. Come on. You don't lost loved ones. You don't lost friends. Come on, come on by the virus, by sickness. Come on, but right now, you in the land of the living. Come on, you above the ground. You're not beneath the ground. That's enough to praise him. That's enough to thank you. That's enough to give him the glory. Somebody open your mouth and praise him. Somebody open your mouth and praise him.
need you to open your mouth and start repeating anything. Come on, put it in the Lord's hands. Come on, repeat it. I put it in the Lord's hands. Hey, because he can do anything. Because he can do anything. Hey. Yes, God. She. We bless it. 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 We thank him. Hey, we honor him. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Glory. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, clap your hands one more time. I pray and scripture my very own minister, Joe Carr. Grace and peace, New Zion Temple. I don't know if y'all realize it or not, but it's 18 days left in this year, right? Do you know that God can do anything? The songwriter said he specializes in things that seem impossible. Oh, what can take 30 days, God can do in 18. What can take a year, God can do in these last 18 days. God can do anything. Oh, clap your hands one more time if you believe that God can do anything. God specializes in the hard thing. Be not discouraged. Be not discouraged. God can do anything. My God today, I'll be doing prayer and scripture. I'll be reading Psalms 150 in its entirety. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the temple and dance. Praise him with the temple and dance. That's what I'll do today. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that is breathing, rather be easy or hard if you're breathing, let everything that has breath praise you the Lord. Now let's talk to him. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you. God, we thank you that you brought us this far. Oh God, we could have did it without you. God, would you carry us from January to now? And we thank you that you're still not done being God. God, we thank you for what you have done for us so far. God, we pray that you come into this service, oh God, and have your way, oh God. Lift the bow down head, mend the broken heart. Holy Ghost, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. I want somebody clap your hands one more time and give them some praise. Come on, clap your hands. I need some hand clappers. Come on, everybody clap your hands. Come on, we ain't coming to entertain. I need some hand covers. Clap your hands.
Some of y'all, it's for my good, it's for my good. I need somebody to lift your hands. I know that all things work together. It's for my good, it's for my good. How y'all lift your hands? I know that all together it's for my good Calabashi it's for my good now this is not playing but I'm going to ask my brother because I feel the spirit can you sing it for me I know that all things work together for my good it's for my good all that all things work together for my good, for my good. I know that all things work together it's for my good. It's for my good. It's for my good. I know that all. Lift your hands in the presence of God. I know that all things. 
that means everything. Work together for my good. For my good. I know that all things work together for my good. Oh, for my good. Oh, come on, lift your hands right where you are. One more, Bishop. I know that all, all things work together for my good. Said it's for my good. I love. For my good, for my good, it's for my good, it's for my good, oh, for my good, oh yeah, for my good, help me say. Not for this your good. whole Come on. Yeah. pandemic is for my hey. good. Hi, yeah, yeah. This whole pandemic hey, is hey. for my good. This whole dry season is for my good. This whole dry season is for my good. Yeah.
lift those hands all over this place. Come on, let me hear you worship him. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. I need to hear the sound of worship. Come on, I need to hear the sound of worship. Get on your feet all over this place and stretch them hands. I need to see my worshipers. I need to hear you. Hey, I worship because it's from my good. Stretch them hands as high as you want God to pull you. Somebody bow before him. It's for my good. It's for my good. What he meant. What he meant for evil. God meant it for my good. It's for my good. Because he had some evil plans. What he meant for evil. What he meant, what he meant for evil, God made it for my good. 
a table, grab a hold to a counter, get the back of a couch. Because the Lord said this next phrase is for your family. God said I'm doing something in your family. What didn't destroy your family? Get ready to make your family better. Somebody go to praise him. This for my house. This for my house. This for my children. I know this is my song in this season. Let the, Let the voice say, I all over the room. 
because of what? Because of what the Lord has done for us. For us. Everybody say, and now, and now, oh yes, let the weak say, I am, am strong. strong. Come on, church. Let the poor say, For us. for us, and now, and now, come on, let the weak say, I am and strong, all over the house, come on, let the poor say, I, I am, am rich, because of what, because of what, the Lord has done, for us, for us. Give thanks. Give thanks. No, 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 no. Give thanks. We're going into the word, but lift those hands straight up. Oh, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. We're going to be in Daniel chapter 6. I love God. No, 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 no. Yeah. I'm going to Daniel 6, but just lift them hands. Lift them straight up, straight up, straight up, straight up, straight up. As high as you can get your hand to go. Give it to him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Lord, you've been good, you've been good, you've been good, you've been good. You've been good. Lord, you've been good, you've been good, you've been good, you've been good. Oh, yeah, na, 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 my name. I love you, Jesus. Yeah, na, 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 na. Yes, I will. I'll be, I'll be your worshiper. Daniel 6, verses 8 through 16. Your worshiper. Daniel chapter 6. If you could stand in the reverence of the word of God. Ayando rabaka yedebosha. Breda da bando do bo reberia sando do bo Daniel 6, verses 8 through 16. What you found is signified by saying, Jesus. If you can't find it, act like you got it anyway. It reads like this from the King James Version Bible. It says, Now, O king, established the decree and signed the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altered not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the written, the writing, and the decree. And now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and he lifted his windows, or his windows being opened in his chambers towards Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and he prayed and gave thanks before God as he did aforetime. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplications before his God. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree and said, Has thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask petitions of any god or man within 30 days, save only thee, O king, shall be cast into the 
den of lions. The king answered and said, the thing is true. According to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altered not. Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor uh, the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh petitions three times a day before his God. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with him and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored until the going down of the sun that he might deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and the Persians is that no decree nor statute with the king established may be changed. Then the king commanded that they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of the lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. I want to talk from the subject on this morning, the secret to significant success. The secret to significant success success there's a story my brothers and sisters of a young man who seemingly had grew jealous of his peer or his friend he could not understand how his friend had the same skill the same ability read the same books and how he and his peer sat under his successful father and his peer seemed to always advance beyond him. What hurt him worse is that the young man's father, who was the CEO of the company they worked under, always praised his friend over him. So the young man went to his father and played reverse psychology to see how much his father really loved his friend. He said, Dad, my friend is great at what he does. Father said he really is. The boy said unto his father, he said, I don't know how he seems to exceed over everyone else. His father said, yes, there is something special about that young man. The next day they all went to work and his friend was there early as he's always early. Sitting in his car with his forehead leaning on the top of the steering wheel. The CEO's son walked up to the car thinking that the boy was asleep and he tapped the window and said, man, are you okay? Uh, it seems like you're asleep and it looks like you're talking in your sleep. The father hearing the boys laughing and joking about the young man uh, being asleep in his car and talking in his sleep and he overhears the friend saying, I wasn't asleep. Father says, no, he was talking to God. He said, that's what makes him special. The father said, every morning he comes early and parks in the same parking spot and puts his forehead on the top of his steering wheel and closes his eyes and talks to God. If you want to know what makes him different, it's the fact that he talks to God. My brothers and sisters, the secret to significant success is constant communication with the Lord of success. Abraham talked with God and the Lord led him from his family to a place he had never seen and made him more prosperous than anyone could imagine. Moses talked with God often and millions of people were set free from captivity. Solomon found out that if I were to get in trouble and if the Lord were to shut up heaven that there'd be no rain and if he were to send locusts to devour the land and send pestilence amongst the people, if I would just talk to the Lord, if I would humble myself and pray and turn from my evil way, then will he hear from heaven, forgive my sins and heal the lamb. My brothers and sisters, I come to tell you this morning, you better learn to talk to God. You better teach your children to talk to God. 
before you discuss any type of matters in life that need real decisions, you better learn how to talk to God. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus and let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry and he will answer by and by and you will feel a little prayer wheel turning and you will know a little fire's burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes everything all right. I have found that we know how to have church. Watch me now when I say we know how to pray. Or have prayer service. But I doubt that many of us know how to communicate with God. We use prayer in these days and times to impress one another. We use prayer to seem like we are deeper or better than the next. We use prayer time for a time to show off our language and, and our English and how well we know this word or that word. We, we use prayer to show off our fluid tongues. But we really haven't communicated with God. Our text reveals a man of God, a man who is preferred by kings, a man who is preferred by God, and a man of significant success. His name is Daniel. His uh, uh, name means God judges. He, 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 he is a man of God. He is a prophet. They tried to change his name to Belshazzar, hallelujah, a Babylonian name, uh, which means to protect the king's life. Uh, my brothers and sisters, though they tried to change his name constantly, amen, they kept on referring him, amen, by what God had designed him to be, a judge and prophet of God. All throughout this prophetic corpus, amen, one of the things we will see is this man constantly and always praying. The prophet Daniel is a man of prayer. Even in Daniel chapter 2, when Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, and the Bible says that, that he could not necessarily reveal or communicate the dream to others. He went to the astrologers and those who worked divination and the magicians, and he said to them, tell me what it is I dream. Tell me what the Lord showed me. Tell me, amen, what God said to me, and then I want you to communicate the understanding of the dream. The Bible says none could tell the dream as wise as they were. They could not interpret the dream. They could not tell the dream. And the Bible says that the king said, I'm going to kill every prophet. I'm going to kill every wise man. I'm going to kill every magician. I'm going to kill all of the astrologers. When the word got back to Daniel, the Bible says he went, amen, to his other brothers that was with him. Amen. You remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he went to them and said, listen, we got to talk to God. There's a matter that is before the king, and the king needs clarity. The king needs understanding. And the Bible says the men went and prayed before the Lord. When they prayed before God, the Bible says that while they were in prayer, the Lord rolled back the understanding and revealed to Daniel what it was the king needed understanding of. My brothers and sisters, through prayer, uh, yeah, yeah, through prayer, uh, through what? Prayer. God was able to reveal to him the secrets that were in heavenly places. Daniel was such a man of prayer that God released favor, wisdom, and intelligence upon him. My favorite chapter in the book of Daniel is, is Daniel chapter 1. It talks about how these boys come over from captivity. They are brought before the king. The king changes their name, but their relationship with God made them of such significance that the king had to testify at the end of the chapter that these men were better than the rest in so much they were 10 times better than everyone that was around them. Their relationship with God made them 10 times better. Their relationship with God made them 10 times better. Their relationship with God made them 10 times wiser, made them 10 times smarter, made them 10 times preferred. Uh, 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 the danger or the fear I have is that we have all of these people who seemingly have a relationship with God, 
but yet you haven't been made any better. Their relationship with God made them 10 times better, gave them 10 times more favor, made them, made them 10 times more intelligent, in so much that it caused those around him to be jealous of him. My brothers and sisters, they tried to use what he loved. They were so jealous that they tried to use what Daniel loved as a way to destroy him. My opinion, my brothers and sisters, I, I, really, I really don't think uh, 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 they were after his prayer life, but they were after the thing that gave him power. Prayer is so significant that when we get into the New Testament, the disciples don't ask Jesus to teach them how to prophesy. They don't ask Jesus to teach them how to preach. They don't ask Jesus to teach them how to work miracles. They don't ask Jesus to teach them how to raise the dead, but they learned that the secret to Jesus' success was his prayer life. So they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. Uh, yeah. uh, my brothers and sisters, there's something about prayer. There is something about real significant life-changing prayer. And this is why the enemy distracts you from your prayer time. This is why when you pray, you can't seem to stay awake. This is why when you pray, you can't seem to focus. This is why when you pray, you can't seem to get yourself together because there is something significant about a real prayer life. The old church used to say it like this, little prayer, little power. Hallelujah, whole lot of prayer, whole lot of power. In other words, my brothers and sisters, if you really want to know how powerful you are, just take a peek into your prayer life. If you don't have a prayer life, then you are dealing with weak power. How often do you pray sometimes? How often do you have power? Sometimes. How often do you pray? Not often. How much power do you have? Not a whole lot. The church is weak because we've been fascinated with prayer, but we don't do much praying. We have prayer conferences, prayer services. We have prayer meetings. We have all these things where we have magnified prayer. But can I tell you, it is not the prayer conference that builds your prayer life. It is what you do when nobody's looking. It is what you do when nobody's watching. It is what you do when no one is around. It is how you behave when people cannot see you. It is you getting up in the wee hours of the night and getting on your knees and talking to God. Uh, do people still lay on their face? I know maybe this generation don't do it no more, but it's when you can lay on that dirty floor with your face and nose to the ground and you get on that floor and you call Jesus. Jesus until something happened but because this is a microwave church and you want everything quick you're down there for three seconds and because you ain't felt nothing you get up off your face and you go on about your business but I need people who seek God do you hear me I'm talking about seek God I'm talking about where you seek him until you find him well I ain't going nowhere I'm going to lay on my face until the Lord reveals himself to me if you look at anybody who was of great significance amen you will understand that these people were people of prayer they talk about people like Bishop C.H. Mason if you look at his life he will tell you he was a man of prayer if you look at people like D.L. Moody you will understand they were people of prayer if you look at these great wonders who were great miracles they were not people who were caught up in gossip and mess and church drama amen and this little bit and that little bit they they were people who had dedicated themselves to prayer because they understood that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man is still about much. If you want to see God bring about a change in the earth, you need to increase your prayer life. And the enemy's goal is to attack you in the area of your strength. But I like the text because the text will reveal to us that they thought they were attacking Daniel in the area of his weakness. 
Uh, uh, they knew that Daniel had a weakness uh, for the presence of God. And the blessing about Daniel is that, amen, this area of weakness was really his area of strength. I know, Brother Austin, that they were looking for his area of weakness because the text says they were looking for his area of weakness. They tried to do a background check on him to see where is he weak? Uh, uh, where, where, where? Where has he failed? Let's see if there's any sin in his life. Let's see if Daniel has ever done anything wrong. Let's see if there's some adultery or fornication. Let's see if he has a drinking problem. Let's see if he has a problem with smoking a little weed. What, what is Daniel's issue? I, I know that there has to be an issue. They got spies to follow Daniel everywhere he was going. And one of the things they discovered while they were following Daniel is every time we look at him in the morning he's praying in the afternoon he's praying as we look at him in the evening he's always on his knees the window is up and Daniel is on his knees praying to God they said I tell you what we'll do it looks like Daniel can't help but pray they said put out a decree and tell the king don't let anybody pray to their God and if they do you will put them in the lion's den we talk a lot about the lion's den, but we don't talk about what got him there. Lord, I wish I had time. Uh, we talk a lot. I know, I know you know about the lion's den, and I know that you know that God allowed him to lay down with lions, but we don't talk about what got him there. Doing the will of God put him in a heap of trouble. Let me talk to somebody today and tell you, I'm not concerned about you folks who are in trouble because you can't live nothing. And because because you're talking about folk and you're messy and you're from one trouble to the next trouble. But I want to talk to you people, amen, we're doing the will of God will get you in trouble. Did you ever know that you can do the will of God until the will of God cause people to hate you? You can do the will of God until the will of God cause people to betray you. You can do the will of God until the will of God cause people to scandalize your name. You can do the will of God until people don't want to be around you away with your folks uh, who just want to be famous uh, you want your name and lights uh, you want everybody to like you let me help you today and tell you that anytime you're really doing the will of God you will cause people to hate you and to scorn you because people don't like people who stand up for righteousness sake and the Bible says they hated Daniel because of his prayer life when we first started our church in Hammond they used to talk about us and say, every time we turn around, y'all always in church. What y'all doing in that church? They told them we praying. What y'all doing late night on Friday night, all night long, we're praying. Uh, what y'all doing early in the morning? We used to shut in. Hallelujah to God. My, my schedule got a little busy, but we used to shut in. Amen. In the beginning, Pastor Jay, you remember seven days straight, we would lock ourselves. Uh, uh, yeah, that's how bad we wanted God. We would lock ourselves in the temple uh, for seven days, uh, and we would pray seven days straight. We wouldn't come out of there, and then, amen, and we, do, we decreased it to three days uh, a whole weekend the last uh, three days of the year uh, we will lock ourselves uh, and we will lay around the church uh, we will bring our Bibles uh, glory to God uh, and gallons of water uh, hallelujah and we would bring coffee uh, hallelujah so we could stay up at night uh, and for those of you who remember we used to have press cycles uh, we would get up at seven and pray uh, and lay on our face uh, what were you saying Bishop, huh? we were down on our face huh? saying, Oh Jesus, huh? ay, 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 huh? oh God, huh? we would begin to call him until tears huh? begin to roll down our face. Huh? Hallelujah. There were those of us huh? who would stand there the whole three days, huh? and then there were those as soon as they got off work, huh? they were knocking on the windows, huh? let us in church. Huh? They were bringing their babies. Huh? Folk got healed from cancer, folk got healed from high blood pressure. Folk got healed from diabetes. Huh? Uh, Y'all ain't talking to 
to me here. Oh, God, when would we have revival? Huh? They would tell you. Huh? We would have revival, and revival would get so good. I would tell them, don't you close this church, huh? but let the folks stay here, because huh? revival ought to get birthed on the inside. Something happens when people learn how to pray. They would talk about us, called us crazy, called us deranged. Somebody even told me one time in the store, now young man, it, ain't, it don't take that much talking to God. God tired of y'all. I said, but I ain't tired of him. And I, and I, he may be tired of me, but I ain't tired of him. And as jacked up as this flesh is, y'all ain't talking to me here. I ain't come to talk to y'all wonderful people. But let me talk about myself. As jacked up as my mind is, as jacked up as my flesh is, what keeps me is my prayer life. Lord, I wish I had a real church. What keeps me going is my fasting. If I don't stay fasting and praying huh? oh you'll see another side of this man of God huh? but what keeps me convicted huh? hallelujah when I want to do wrong and evil huh? my prayer life huh? oh young devil Lord I wish I had somebody that could testify that prayer is the power that keeps me stable they tried to destroy Daniel through his communication with God. They knew that Daniel's source was God. So if we can disconnect him from his source. Uh, yeah, we win. Uh, God. Uh, this was ultimately, my brothers and sisters, an attack on Daniel's prayer life. Uh, I look at somebody and say, neighbor, uh, I said, please don't let the devil win. Please, please don't let the devil win. Uh, please don't let, let me tell you, some of you are, he's not winning, amen, through sin in your life. For some of you, he's winning through distraction. You're too busy. You're too busy. You're too busy. You're too busy. Uh, can I testify? The Lord had to get on me. He said, son, you're too busy. You're too busy. Don't ever let your schedule get so lengthy where you don't have time to talk to me. Some of y'all done got too busy. You all successful now. You got a business now. You running the world now. They calling you over here and calling you over there. And all while you're being called, they're zapping you of what got you there. Don't forget what got me here because if you forgot what got you here you're going to die here because you forgot your source Lord who am I preaching to in here today don't forget what keeps you surviving I'm not surviving because I got a stimulus check I'm not surviving because I got a job I'm not surviving because I got a boo I'm not surviving because I got friends I'm surviving because I have learned how to get on my knees and say I need thee oh I need thee every hour I need thee bless me now my gentle savior I come to the Lord I wish I had somebody who would I wish I had somebody who would take a moment and just lift your hands and declare to God how much you need him I pray because I need him I pray I pray because I love him. I pray because I want him. I pray because my help is in the name of the Lord. For the Lord our God is mighty. My help is in the name. Ah, uh, yeah. I would start trouble until you call that name. My help. You're the man. So, Jesus. Daniel knew that his source was God. Daniel knew. Yeah, no, 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 no. She looked at here prayer that his source was. God, encourage someone next to you and tell them, neighbor, your source is God. 
uh, though they were after Daniel to destroy him because they knew his faithfulness to his God. Through their aim, Daniel was incited to understand, though you don't want me to pray, though you want to incite fear and destruction in me to talk to God, Daniel knew I need to talk to him. Daniel also knew that it was his connection with God that was more important than anything else. He risked his life, lifted up his window, got down on his knees, and he prayed. Uh, he, he knew, he knew, he knew that, that me having a prayer life was more important than me living my life. So he risked his life that he might talk to God. Oh, come on. Do you see? Do you see what the text is telling us? They said, Daniel, if you pray, we'll kill you. Daniel lifted up his window, dropped on his knees, risked his life, and talked to God. I'm just trying to show you how important prayer is. He says, I prefer you kill me before I give up praying. I'll let you take, I'm going to lift up the window and let you see me do it. And, uh, oh, come on, church. Uh, I want you to hear me. Uh, and Because uh, guess what? I want you to know I'm so covered in prayer uh, that if you try to kill me, and I'm on, uh, Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost here. Prayer going to get me through. Uh, it was prayer that caused me to interpret the king's dream. It is prayer that made me ten times better than the rest. Uh, it was prayer that kept Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in burning fire and it is prayer that's going to walk with me in the lions and I'll risk my life to talk to my God. Daniel knew that the law was leveled against him. Therefore he stood his ground knowing that he now had a fair opportunity to honor God before men and show them he preferred the favor of God over favor with man. When Daniel knew the decree was signed, you would think that Daniel would go to the king because you must know that Daniel had more power than anyone else in the kingdom besides the king. He was second in command. He was the Joseph, hallelujah, to the king. He was the Joseph to King Darius. And Daniel didn't go to the king and change the decree. He went to the king of kings. And talked about the decree. Uh, 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 here he is. He could change it in one conversation. He could go to the king and say, hey, this decree is out of order. Hey, this decree should not be. But then you said, no, 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 this is bigger than me. Mm. Uh, this is bigger than me. Mm. Uh, I'm going somewhere. This is, uh, this is bigger than me. Mm. Uh, Let me show you how to handle stuff uh, that's bigger than you. Yeah. Let me show you how to handle stuff uh, that's out of your hands. Uh, let me show you how to handle stuff uh, that you don't know what to do with. Uh, anytime you've got something uh, and you don't know what to do with it. Anytime uh, you have something that seems... Uh, to be bigger than you. You need to stop talking to people about it. You need to find yourself a corner. You need to get down on your knees. And you need to do like the old church did and stretch their hands up and say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thy hand from thee, where the shalt I go? Look at somebody and say, Neighbor, the reason you're going through a sickness that the doctor 
that can't cure. It's because he's trying to teach you how to pray. The reason you're confused about your marriage is because he's trying to teach you how to pray. The reason you're confused about your finances is because he's trying to teach you how to pray. The reason the world is dealing with a virus that we don't understand is because God is trying to teach us how to pray. If, yeah, 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 yeah. If, yeah, no, if, 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 my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and move from the evil ways. Then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins and heal the land. I don't know who I'm talking to here, but I dare you find about three people and say, neighbor, pray, 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 pray. Somebody ought to lift your hands and just rock back and holler, Jesus. You can talk about me, but I'm still going to pray. You can scandalize me, but I'm still going to pray. You can run my name in the mud, but I'm still going to pray. Because one thing that I've learned in this season is that men ought to always pray and not faint. The problem with the current church is we're always fainting and not praying. But if you're going to make it in this new season where the coronavirus ain't going nowhere. If you're going to make it in this season where politics are seemingly crazy. If you're going to make it in this season where church folks are not saying something. If you're going to make it in this season where preachers have lost their power. If you're going to make it in this season where prayer warriors don't know how to war. If you're going to make it in this season, you've got to learn how to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto you if you're going to make it in this season you've got to be like Moses you've got to find you a high place you got to get in that place and wrap yourself in the glory of God and pray until something changes look at your neighbor look at your neighbor and tell him neighbor you're waiting on things to change but tell him God is waiting for you to pray until it change that's the wrong neighbor you another neighbor look that neighbor in the face and tell him neighbor you're waiting on things to change but tell him neighbor God is waiting on you to pray until it changes. That's still the wrong neighbor. In a man's you another neighbor. Tell him neighbor, you're waiting on things to change. But God is waiting on you to pray until it changed. Daniel had made his house prayer territory. Or Betty had Daniel had made his house to be his prayer closet. 
every time Daniel went home three times a day he was praying to God I heard a wise man say wherever we have a tent God must have an altar yonder will shine wherever you have a roof God must be the center of it the problem with our children is we ain't praying no more the problem with our churches is we ain't praying no more the problem with our ministries is we ain't praying no more but I come today on a clarion call to talk to somebody and to call you out of hiatus I come to call you out of your slumber place I come to call you out of your place of bondage and I come back to tell you that God he's getting ready to increase the power that is in his church but the only way he's going to increase it is if the people of God will come out of loaded bar and will open their mouth and will go back to praying church don't stop praying for the Lord is nigh church don't stop praying he'll hear your cry the Lord will answer he'll answer you please don't stop praying the Lord he will come through I don't know who I'm preaching to but I stop that to tell you that in this hour God is calling us to labor yonder Boshaya to labor he commands to to labor Branda Bahaya to labor in prayer when you get up in the morning pray in the noon time pray late in the midnight hour pray because prayer is getting ready to shift it yonder Boshaya I need you to wave your hand. I need you to open your mouth. And I need you to declare in the atmosphere that prayer is getting ready to shift it. Prayer is getting ready to change it. Prayer is getting ready to turn it. Prayer is getting ready to make it better. Somebody pray for me. Hand me on their mind. Took them time and pray for me. I'm so glad, so glad they prayed. Took the time and prayed for me. Pray. I feel cancer dries up. Pray. Until children live right up. Pray. Until depression is no more. Pray. Until oppression get up and leave. The Lord told me to tell you, Zion, if you would pray, more power is on the way. Please. Look at somebody, tell a neighbor, get ready for power, get ready for power, get ready for power. Come to the whole shop, lean on a monster toe, breath down in my heart, young the bullshit. He's calling you deeper, he's calling you deeper, he's calling you deeper, he's increasing your gift, he's increasing your ability. He's increasing your anointing. He's increasing you right where you are. When you pray, you get like John. John the Baptist. You say, I must decrease that Jesus would increase. Lay your hand on your belly and say, God 
is increasing uh, when I pray. Uh, he's increasing uh, when I call him. Uh, he's increasing uh, when I seek him. Uh, he's increasing uh, when I go deeper. Uh, he's increasing. Uh, he's increasing uh, my anointing. Uh, he's increasing uh, my oil. Uh, he's increasing uh, my power. Uh, he's increasing. The victory that's on my life. He's increasing the glory. He's bringing to me. I want to tell you when you pray, you can testify. Eyes have not seen and ears haven't heard what God. He's getting ready, he's getting ready, he's getting ready to do in your life. If you know he's going to do it, say it, say it, say it, say it. Oh, yeah. Power's coming. Power's coming. Power's coming. Power's coming. You're going to see demons dry up. Power's coming. You're going to see lives get better. Power's coming. You're going to see glory increase. Power's coming. Pray church. Pray church. Pray church. The Bible says that Daniel prayed until it landed him in the lion's den. His prayer life put him in the lion's den. Watch me now. Because Daniel opened his mouth, the lion closed theirs. Ah. So man, I wobasha. That's what I almost named the sermon. Uh, but the Lord had me go another way. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, if you would open your mouth, tell them the lion to close theirs. You ain't gotta worry about it. Oh, come on, church. I need you to find about three people and tell them if you would open your mouth, the naysayer will close that. The gossiper will close that. Social media will close that. Oh, come on. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Come on, bush. I guess somebody throw your head back and holler, cheer up. Oh, come on here. Open your mouth. Lord, I feel something shifting. I feel something shifting. I feel something shifting. He waits on you to open your mouth. Lord, I got to leave and stand alone. Woo! Don't you do that. Ow! Yeah, cut, 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 cut. Ee, ba, 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 ba. Somebody tell 
them don't argue with them. Tell them don't try to fix it. Tell them the secret to getting through this next season. Tell them if you talk to God, he'll talk to it. Oh, come on. Oh, no. You're talking to the wrong people. If you talk to God, Lord, my time is up. But I feel Jesus. Oh, yeah. If you talk to God, if you talk to God, Somebody wave your hand and holler Jesus one more time. Cause I feel victory. Woo! How? Victory shall be mine. If I hold my peace and the Lord fight my battle, victory shall be mine. Somebody have a victory, 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 victory. Yeah, we gotta let this thing go, but I feel God working out something the Holy Ghost. Victory is still on the oh. If I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battle. Victory, victory shall be mine. Oh, victory, oh, it shall be mine. Ha, yeah, oh. yeah, boy. <laughs> you, you gotta stop it, Christian. I gotta, I gotta get to be yourself. They thought that if they would put you in it, it was an automatic win for them. But God's going to let you live through what other people didn't just die in, they were destroyed in. Prophesy to somebody and tell a neighbor, you're so anointed and your prayer life is so potent that you're getting ready to live through what other people were destroyed in. I don't want to start no trouble. But Quentin, that's how you made it through these past three months. You live through what others didn't just die in, what destroyed him. And because prayer is getting ready to bring you out, I guess somebody take one step and holler Jesus in that step. One, two, three. Yeah. Don't you praise him like that, Jessica. Oh, I dare you take another step. Just start walking. Start walking.
Get out of here. I give you 30 seconds. Somebody say neighbor, look at him, say neighbor, the reason you living through it is because you're getting ready to walk in the best season of your life yet. It ain't the best season of your life, it's just the best season you've seen as of yet. Because I, hey, I got better, you better praise him, sister, something. God is bringing you to the best season of your life as of yet. That's the reason I'm coming out of this. Because I'm living through the best season I've had as of yet. If you believe it, take 30 seconds.
Do 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 do